Lazar, Guyana. Good day of fishing, caught some great fish. And um, first thing we like to do to celebrate is with some of this Caribbean rum. Oh yeah, this is what happens at nighttime <laughs> in the Amazon jungle. Uh, we're drinking rum. We are going through tackle. We are running out of hooks. So we're sorting through what we have left. We're gonna tie some rigs and basically this is the after hours of what happens here in Guyana. Also, bug spray. Yes. Don't forget it. Our ankles are a little beat up. Our ankles are a little swollen. I don't think it's really the bugs, but I was reading my survival field guide thing. It's like heat edema or whatever. We're gonna twist up some wire rigs for some kitty cats, but first I have to see what I have going on here, which isn't much for the big catfish at least. And, ow. Looks like I uh, only have two of these 12 up big river hooks left. This seems to be the most desired hook from everyone here. And they've been working the best, so... I mean, there's two of those left, and... I got four of these 10 aught J hooks, extra heavies, which are the second best. And then... I guess 8 aught J hooks. I have... Two heavy duty circle hooks left. So yeah, not looking in the best shape here. And we have three more days left. So basically, we can't afford to get snagged anymore, which I did twice today. I lost two hooks. Not good. Oh, I do have these circle hooks, but sure they'll have, work. I have those as well. I'm good amount of them. Look at these fat circle hooks right here. I'm sure they'll work for something. But it's not a long shank, so they don't look as big as what they actually are. But it'll work. Let's twist something up, I guess. So we're gonna do haywire twists with this. I'm using 180 pound Malin wire and I'm going to dole out my <laughs> plier cutters by cutting this wire because I don't feel like bending it. You, If you wanna keep your plier cutters in good shape, do not do this which I just did, and I could, I know they're getting worn out because I tried to cut braid and mono today, and I had to borrow Chris's snips to do it. Also had issues cutting the 100 pound mono with my pliers because I got up. lazy, decided not to just twist off, break the wire, which I should have been doing from day one, flattened out my cutters. And this guy here always forgets stuff in the cabin. That's Larry, Larry Jr. Larry right there. Larry Jr., like you heard of Larry Dahlberg. <laughs> yeah. Larry, yeah, Larry Dahlberg. This is Larry Dahlberg Jr. <laughs> hey, he's got I'm Mari King. Got one, one ten pounder today. Gotta grab so. my rigs. He's gonna go grab his rigs. Has to bring his drink. Wasn't attached. <laughs> <laughs> Before we twist up some wire, cheers to being in Guyana in the Amazon. Chris got his biggest fish ever just yesterday. Massive fish. So, congrats to that. And let's drink up. Now to some business. Really not sure how well you're gonna be able to see this, but we're gonna do a haywire twist and basically a wire rig you could use for anything in the Amazon. Catch big catfish, catch Aymara or the wolffish. The Arapaimas we tend to tie 100 pound mono to hooks like this or circle hooks, whatever you wanna use. 10 aught, 12 aught, 14 aught hooks would work good for Arapaima. Like a 100 pound mono or fluorocarbon leader, five foot plus with a FG knot. And on all my reels, all my big reels, I have 80 pound Power Pro right now. My smaller tackle, I think I have 30 pound Power Pro for all my peacock bass and arowana stuff. So we're just going to put the wire through the eye of the hook. We're gonna bend the wire here. And we're going to do some twists. One, two, three like that. Just like that. The most important part now is we're gonna make 90 degree barrel turns. Kizzy has a whole bunch already tied up there. That's what he did in his room when he walked away for two minutes. Yeah, he just tied <laughs> all those up. That's it, how you want it to look. That's how you want it to look, <laughs> yes. So we're gonna do 90 degree barrel turns. Easier said than done. One, two, three. It definitely hurts your fingers a little bit. Four, I think I have four there. Five-ish. We got going on so we got 
the three twists, three little twists like that, and then four or five barrel turns. Basically, if you get three barrel turns in, you're golden. Not much is gonna pull that apart. Now, you don't wanna cut your tag end with the pliers or any cutters that you have. It leaves a very sharp edge, and if it nicks your braid, it will bust it off. So, I like to bend it down. <clears throat> bend it back up it takes a little bit but it's worth it because it leaves you with a smooth edge just keep on bending every which way sometimes it happens in two bends sometimes it happens in like 10 also if you cut it and leave the tag end and you grab the swivel when the fish is on it you'll be in the hospital getting stitches yes too. which I've learned the hard way in John's boot with the shark <laughs> almost cut off my pinky I'm still working on it <laughs> And there it is. It took me a lot longer than normal, but I got that tag end off. And you just wanna make sure your wire is as straight as possible. Then on this end, we're gonna tie a barrel swivel. I think I have like 175 pound or 200 pound barrel swivels. And it's gonna be the same process where we're gonna put it through the eye of the swivel. We're going to bend the wire in the eye. We're gonna do those three twists again. One, two, three and then again those barrel turns for four or five of them we have that stuck to the wire bag and now we're gonna break off the tag end here again it took me four bends of the wire this time to get it off and here you have a amazonian catfish slash aymara rig ready to go up against these river monsters you know, for aymara i have all these hooks I have three Tenno circle hook rigs tied. I have one, two, three Tenno. I have more Tenno JOs than I thought, so we should be good. Is this taking lunch out? Yeah, um, I think so. I think so, yeah. Everybody? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Thank you. Thank you. Jamie, I'm seeing your post about masturbating tackle in Bonita Springs. That really hits home. That's a place that I've been going to for years. And I'm so sorry to everyone in Southwest Florida. I live in Southwest Florida. I'm fortunate to still have my condo. My father has a property in Fort Myers that got hit pretty bad. We're dealing with some of the pain too. I'm fortunate to have my vehicle and my condo still. Um, here in Guyana, while it happens, actually we're like the last flight out, probably one of the last flights out of Florida. It delays because of the storm. Yeah, we had delays because of the storm, and I was kind of scared going to the airport that we weren't going to fly out. We were going to be stuck in Florida for Category 4 slash 5 hurricane. So my condolences to uh, all the people affected by Hurricane Ian. Um, that was horrible. I feel bad for being here in Guyana and not being there for my dad to help him with the big cleanup. But he ensured me that he was going to be okay and safe and that I had to go on this trip for you guys. So I am here. I will be dealing with the mess when I get back. I think I still have a job <laughs> when I get back. I'm not quite sure. I still got YouTube though. So we'll see when I get back home. And we're just gonna continue tying up these catfish, wolfish rigs. You're fine, use them. You they're sure? running all the way to the boat. Yeah. Oh, right. We don't want Chris to get bit by a coral snake down there. That's my, that's the reason I was going down there. The last time I was here, there was uh, coral snakes every night alongside the boat. They called him Coral Amorelli, which I don't think is a known species of coral snake, to be perfectly honest. have not seen any snakes yet. A little disappointed on the snakeage part of the trip. One of these nights, the guide's taking us out shining, which means using our headlamps, looking for eye shine, trees and bushes right along the river's edge. So maybe that'll be tomorrow night. That'll be a segment and one of the episodes that you shall see. Again, that'll probably be next week's episode. But we're gonna continue tying up stuff here. Now I'm just trying to sort through exactly what I have and what I need. I think I have like two wire rigs in my little pouch in my room. So I'll probably have to tie up. I'm gonna tie up. This, this is the plan here, folks. I'm gonna, besides the one that I did before, I'm gonna tie up this 12 out hook, this 10 out hook, just to have a couple ready to go. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do a circle too. Dude, now I can't snap the tag in though. You saw that bug spray? Yeah. Thanks. No, I'm not gonna do a circle. I lied about the circle. I'm just gonna do the two J hooks. Seems like 
and I've been sick with the J hook way. So let's just stay with that. I bought like 12 packages of of these hooks right Actually, here. Bugged, these yeah. 12 odd big river hooks. <laughs> and there's only three per package, but somehow I only have two left. Don't know how that quite happened, but yeah. So we have three days left, so we have to be uh, smart and <laughs> try not to jam up too much with our hooks. I don't know what I'm doing right now. I'm so tired. I literally can't even break this tag in. Off. He's complaining about being tired. He's been. Oh, like, Eric was complaining about what earlier? You know, I got a little fish slime on me. I took a photo with a 50 pound catfish. I'm on yeah. and I got rock dust on my butt. Mm -hmm. uh, I took a shower because. I know how that feels. I it's took a shower good. because I had uh, jowl slime. I'm um, actually today, this week's video that you just watched. Uh, You'll see that jowl. Um, you just saw it, actually. He was on my lap, as you saw, and they're pretty damn slimy. And I got that slime all over my legs and didn't realize, really, until it dried, how bad it was. You know, a little jammed up. I, I don't know what you're doing right now. I, can't, I literally... I'm so tired. I'm going to bed right <laughs> now. No, you're not. He thinks, literally... he thinks he's going to bed. It's only 8.45, so we have at least another two hours to go. We've been doing this every night. Welcome to Guyana. Cut that off, because that sucks. I literally couldn't even tie a rig. Is anybody getting any Wi-Fi messages right now? No, somehow I have Facebook going on. But it's weird. Like, I have Facebook going on. As Jamie, I just told you, I saw your post about masturbating and tackle and Benita, but uh, I can't send any Facebook Messenger stuff, so it's just weird. No idea why. No, I'm gonna get my player, so I don't uh, I'll tell you what, we're actually pretty lucky. I'm not complaining because we've had sporadic Wi Fi, let's put it that way. But we're in the middle of the most remote part of the world and we have some sort of Wi Fi. That's pretty nuts. Chris is going down to the boat to get bit by coral snake. Listen to the sounds of the jungle at nighttime. Quite a background sound, background noise, or tying rigs for your giant monstrous fish. Yeah, basically we got lucky, um, the episode you saw, I don't remember what day I caught Daimara, I don't know, two weeks ago, the episode you saw two weeks ago, I got real lucky with that Aymara, not that they're not here, you could certainly catch Aymara at Pier Riva Lodge, but this isn't like the wolfish spot, or the Aymara spot, really you have to go south, very deep into the jungle, where there's higher elevation, and the Esquibo River up in the hills and mountains, and everything's very tight and snaggy and that's where the big giant Aymara are. I have like a very brief video like from last year catching some big Aymara. Uh, I have to get back to guns where I caught them to make a video for you guys but I don't know when that's gonna happen. So make sure you subscribe so that could happen. The more people that hit that subscribe and like button oh get monetized and uh, start making money doing this and I could afford to come back to Guyana to different locations to make really badass videos like the ones you just seen the past few weeks. No coral snakes but there are a couple black caiman in the bushes. There you got it folks. No coral snakes but a couple black caiman in the bushes and I'm still twisting away here. A little confused because the guides that went up the river took our boat but they took this stuff and the tackle bin I left and the rods and put them on the other one. So they took our boat, but yeah. put the rods on the other boat. So it's all here, but the boat is that way. Yeah, our guides went somewhere. I kind of wish they were telling us that they were going somewhere because I definitely would have went with them. But I understand they are with us for 12 hours of the day, and it's kind of like when you're at work, you don't want to take your customers with you, and you just want to hang out with your with your buds, you know. I get that. Having to deal with us for 12 hours is probably the hardest part of the day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Especially this guy here. Probably getting his beat. They Maybe. probably are. They're probably going to one of their... I feel like they put out nets at they night time, nets. Yeah, right? They put out, like, a gill net or something. Mm -hmm. And they catch us what our guy calls sardines. sardines. But they're not sardines, but they kind of look like them. Guyanese sardines. Guyanese freshwater Amazonian sardines. Mega sardines, monster sardines, I don't know what you want to call it. So let me finish up this rig, jaw flapping, and pay attention to what I'm doing so I have a legitimate catfish rig. The wire got warm from twisting it, I never noticed that before. Right? Yeah, like it was like 20 degrees hotter. Now I snap it off in literally two bends, 
Anyways, but that right there is a nice tight twist. Don't trust that, YouTube. Don't no fish that. in this river are going to pull out that wire. Don't bite through that. it like it's happened to I me already. I watched a wolf fish bite right through his wire. Oh, it was John's wire. Oh, he used, he used so the 180, not, not the 218. <laughs> well, guess what? I used 180 wire on an Imara, so I don't know what you're talking about. Well, at least I knew I hooked mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. As you saw, maybe no, actually, you didn't see the whole thing, but I didn't even know mine was hooked. I went to reel in to be a nice guy when Chris got a bite, and I had my giant wolfie on. I got real lucky because every single wolfish Chris hooked into ended up in one of the trees lying on the bottom. I was sitting there. It's probably about like. We had a tough day today. It was probably two hours before we got our first bite, which was the opposite of Eric and Chris. And uh, I'm in, I'm in the stance, and I just got that knock. And dude, I swung for the fences, right? And guy, he's just <laughs> like, Dope. and I just started cranking. And he's like, yeah, I'm gonna slow down. And I'm yeah, like, don't I'm get not the Mar right up to the boat. Don't get him right yeah, to the boat. Yeah, I got it right to the boat in like four and a half seconds. And, yeah. um, <laughs> yeah, he wasn't too pumped about that. I was pumped. I'll show you a picture right here of what a Aymara did to me. The first picture you're looking at right now is the Aymara and Lawrence's, who was with me the last time I was in Guyana down in Guns. He was he was a pretty cool fishing buddy. And, um, yeah, that big wolf fish that you see there jumped up out of the water and decided to bite me in the leg. He was not hooked on anyone's line. And uh, that second picture is the few days after of what it looked like. You can see how nasty the wound is. So it's understandable why the guides don't want the Aymara right next to the boat right away. We're, we're in it. We're in it. So right now I'm like I struggling tying this. I tie that one. That's a good one. Wow. Ouch. I'm going to tie an extra. I'm going to use this one for the airplane tomorrow again. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jay hooking them? Yeah. So they're really they good. Don't, they don't bend. They're not like the ones. Yeah. Yeah, these are actually good hooks. That's why I was like, I wouldn't change them. No, this lure is thought out. Like what, what I Eric was it. saying. Yeah, this is the perfect arowana top order lure. Mm -hmm. We've been having trouble with arowana spitting it, and that's it. And uh, so yeah, like we were using spooks for arowana, which is that walk the dog style. Um, they certainly work, but you're aiming your rod down, going like this. Yeah, that's that's a spook right there. Great lure. Um, they certainly work, but you're putting your rod down, going like this to walk the dog. Blah blah blah. But with whopper plopper, I keep my rod at a 45 degree angle, just a steady retrieve. This thing spins, makes a loud gurgling sound, and the guy who invented this. Larry Dahlberg, he has been fishing Guyana, Suriname, and French Guyana since like the early 80s. Basically what these are imitating are the basilic lizards that run across the water, also commonly known as Jesus Christ lizards, and they make this like gurgling sounds with their feet as they run across the surface, just right across. And that's what this thing's doing. And uh, those arowana stay pins. I lost like 20 arowana this trip on a spook. Every as you've seen in this week's episode, every single one stayed pinned with the whopper plopper. So, yeah, a guy that um, fished these areas for many years invented this lure, and it is showing results. So let's stick with that. I also feel like they imitate um, when a bird is in the water and it's taking off and its wings are slapping yeah. while part of the bird is cruising across the surface. And we know they eat bats, and I, I assume they also will eat a small bird. Yeah. So these, uh, uh, not Aymara, these uh, arowana are eating bats, birds, and the Jesus Christ lizards. That's the reason why whopper ploppers are so deadly. Here, we just had another catfish rig, or Aymara rig. That one's looking a little bit better than the last one, so let's keep this one. I'm probably gonna do two more, and then my thumbs and fingers are probably gonna have enough for the night. Eric won't show you guys my rigs because they make his look bad, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is what it is, but. I'm noticing that I have like 10% battery left and I've been at it for like 25 minutes. But we're going to continue signing up these rigs and we will see you on day seven from the Essequibo River 
with Guyana, South America.